Hey, what's up guys? I'm Jordan. I'm one of the founders of Sick Bicycle Co. Now, this is the first time I'm doing a joint podcast and vlog at the same time. And it's going to be an, a subject that's close to my heart. And I think it's close to a lot of people's heart. Sponsorship. Now, every single bike company in the world right now shivered like someone stood on their grave because um, it's one of the most frequently asked questions. And when I say frequently asked, I'm talking up to 10 messages a day to even a brand of our size and we're, we're like small so you can imagine what uh bigger companies like trek and specialized get there must be ways of fielding them it, it's, it's um what why is it so um, important to people to be sponsored well i think we all know that getting paid to do what you love is a pretty exciting prospect one of the reasons we run the company in the first place is because we love bikes we want to make bikes so it's kind of like um, that was our way into the industry. Getting paid to do what you love is one of the, the greatest things that you can really achieve. So I'm going to use some of the insight that I have in this industry and a few other industries to give you some hints and tips or even find out if it's worth you even applying to be sponsored. Now, I guess that's the crux is probably one of the first questions you should ask yourself is, am I really cut out to be a sponsored rider? The chances are, if you were good enough to be sponsored, someone would have approached you already. And if you're not, they won't be able to develop you and you can't offer anything. So that's kind of a complex situation. We'll get way more into it as we go along and how you can improve and develop a good pitch. One caveat though, one favour. We are a small company. We already have a race team and we've had one of our guys for nearly a year now. We're not going to add anyone else. So this is not carte blanche to email me asking for a sponsorship. That's your one one promise to me. I'll give you the inside information I have. You have to promise that you won't bug me about it because we won't take any more people on. I'll also go into how we gave sponsorship to each one of our team members and why. And I think you'll find that will give you kind of an insight into it. The, um, the industry as a whole is... Um, quite secretive so I, a lot of the time I understand why people just use a shotgun kind of approach the most frequent thing we get is just a one line in Instagram saying in our direct messages someone that doesn't follow us someone that has never communicated with us saying I want a free bike I want to be sponsored that's probably about as effective as a guy whistling at a girl in the street and saying Hey QE, you want to go on a date? And her turning around and going, you know what, Dave? I absolutely do. You you look like a winner. I mean, I've never met you before, and the first thing you did is commented on my appearance. But I can see a long term relationship forming. It don't work. You know, you might as well be one of those guys. You know, that comments under pictures on Instagram. You are beautiful, lady. Show me your bobs. It's it's not going to happen. You're never going to get to see her bobs, mate. And likewise, you're never going to get sponsored asking for it like that. Alex Robertson's one of our riders and he defined being sponsored as kind of like it's it's like a business deal. You're an employee but you're also an employer. It's really really complicated and you have to put in to get out and I think that's pretty true. Some of the most successful riders are some of the hardest working but there are also um, there are also anomalies. Uh, people that break through with different attributes and I'd say um, in, in those those riders that break through with different attributes, probably Loose Dog and uh, Ben Deacon, Deaconator. My outside opinion, you know, is they're hardworking and they're good riders, but they came in a different way than you'd normally expect. So let's start breaking things down. And I'm going to take a little bit of a tangent here. For the last half a decade, I've been lucky enough to make um, a living from doing things I like. From, from the moment I left work, I've, I've, done, I've done things I like. I, I set out to do them. So I have kind of an insight into how it all works, if that makes sense. One industry that's very similar is I work in the tattoo industry. And a lot of the time, we'll get emails saying, I want an apprenticeship. Think about an apprenticeship as asking for a sponsorship. It's a really similar thing. And nearly everything I would say today could cross over into any field doesn't have to just be sponsorship it could even be just looking for a job doing something you like so this may help in more than one way 
I was also a guitarist in a band on a record label. One, one thing that all bands want to do is be signed. Very similar. The, all of these things are really, really similar in nature. And I've done and succeeded at all of them. So taking a little segue, let's go back to Little Jordan with my emo fringe and my eyeliner on, my fresh face and my bad tribal tattoos um, and shopping in Claire's accessories um, and see how I took myself from doing that in a scout hut in Littlehampton in Sussex to touring the world and playing music for a living. Not a very good living, but you'll start to find that when you do something you like, you're never particularly well paid for it yet. And then I'm going to be a billionaire with sick and, you know, I'm going to sit in my ivory tower smoking cigars and buying gold shoes. Or I don't know what millionaires do, actually, to be honest. Um, so when when we first started our band, we wanted to get signed, like get signed to a record label. So you start sending out letters. We didn't really have emails then. So sending out letters and demo CDs. Demo CDs weren't very good. They were recorded on a CDR. We never got anyone come back to us. Never. And then we realised that we were just doing things wrong. And when I say, when then we realised, it took like five years. Um, <laughs> but we realised that all of our friends' bands that got signed were in London. Were playing in London. Went out drinking with journalists. And we were like, ah, you know, and it's, it's, people say it's not what you know, it's who you know. And that's totally and utterly true. I reckon all those CDs and the posts were just going straight in the bin. There were probably hundreds a day an environmental disaster there's probably islands made out of demo cds floating in the ocean that i sent in you know it's kind of embarrassing once i sent a letter to the smashing pumpkins with a cassette saying could they put in a good word for me since i bought all their albums uh, i wasn't the brightest of kids a lot of the time but you know i was thinking outside the box so that they'd have a direct contact eventually we worked out that we'd need to play in london we'd need to talk to journalists so it would come to the point where one day I just rung up a magazine, one of the journalists, and I was like, hey, you want to go out for a pint at the Black Heart? And they were like, yeah, all right then. I was like, I'm paying. And they were like, definitely. We went, we talked about the band, I handed over a CD. We got a, a tiny paragraph review in the, in the magazine, had a phone call the next day. Record labels contacted us. Do we want to do a demo for them? And that was that. It was as simple as that. We were on that record label. They were the first people that contacted us, and they were kind of garbage, actually. We did our demo CD, and then I realised that I, what I wanted to head for was not a major label, but a big one. So I got smart. I started going and buying promo CDs off eBay. Um, why would I buy a promo CD off eBay? Because they're the ones A&R reps hand out to people. So they have the e email address and phone number of the person who's responsible for signing bands on them. And I bought hundreds of them. Um, and then actually I'd resell them on eBay for a profit and use it to fund the band. Eventually we moved to a larger label um, and got loads of money to record a record, uh, which we never did. We went and toured around loads and that was fun. And then we all got so drunk all of the time that we ended up falling out of each other and the band disbanded and we never really succeeded at anything. Um, but that's a good case study in how you actually find the right path to do it. So how does that transmit to the bike industry? Well, it's, I think it's definitely going to be easier. Um, it depends on your level of what you want. If you're looking to get a World Cup downhill rig, you know, a big Ford truck with logos on it and stuff like that, you're in for a rough ride if you live in the UK because there's very, very few people at that level that are good. Um, but that's not to say that it's impossible. What you what you need to focus on is delivering something exceptional. Now, a lot of the time you might feel that's race results. And if we were having this conversation even five years ago, it would have been. But the rise of the lifestyle rider is something that can't be ignored. And we're talking guys like Josh Bryceland, Lewis, even, even Ben Deacon, although he is pretty rapid and races a lot. What do those guys have in common? They're fun to watch on YouTube videos. They're amusing online. They're witty in person. Like you can ask them a question, answer it straight away and it'll be fun and engaging. You know, those guys, they stand out. Now, when you're being sponsored, 
you're kind of the marketing for the brand. So if you're the kind of person that gets attention, then you're good for the brand. I mean, Sean Palmer was pretty wild, you know, but he didn't, I mean, he was fast as well, but he wasn't consistently number one. It was his appearance, his attitude, and his visibility that was important more than anything else. So when you look at guys like that, and even Steve Pete, now he was like, he's a super winning guy now, he retired, but you know, he's got a little empire. But really, Pete only started getting exciting when he, probably when he moved to GT, and he started hanging out with the US guys, and they started getting wild and doing fun stuff, and they really stood out, dyed their hair, got tattooed, you know. And I'm talking about at a time when the sport was really conservative, and you had guys like Nico and, and Caroline Chasson, and they're kind of like hard work ethic. And then guys like Cedric Gracier start coming in, Steve P and Rob Warner are like, you know, they're, they're kind of exciting and fun, and it's actually really good for the community as well as the brand. Mountain biking should be fun. At the moment, it's become race orientated. Do you know what? This is a thing for a different podcast, vlog, whatever. In the but we've got to stop calling trail bikes enduro bikes. No one's racing enduro. Well, people are racing enduro, but not the na- like the number of them that, that are enduro bikes. You've got to stop calling it enduro. Enduro bikes should be a really specific thing. Trail bikes or something else, stop calling them the same thing. That's a different rant for a different time. <laughs> but, so, what what are my tips to actually start succeeding? One, the shotgun, the shotgun approach doesn't, doesn't help. If you just keep emailing people or texting them or tracking down their personal Facebook accounts and messaging on them over and over again, coming on live stream, talking to you directly, please stop doing that to me, it's not cool. Um, you're not really going to get anything. In fact, the kind of thing that you might get is a free t-shirt from four years ago that people got in the back of stock that they'll give you to shut up. If you're looking for the good things, the good stuff, the caviar of bikes, then you need to be smart. One, definitely, definitely try to stand out. Now that's important. I don't mean going to a, you know, a, a, a race and setting your dick on fire. You don't need to do that. I don't mean doing thousands and thousands of slow-mo edits of you berm destroying um, loam. You know, like, we don't need that. We've we've seen it. What I'm talking about is not going to a race dressed as Aaron Gwynn in the set, like, with fake sponsor stickers on your van and the same, you know, a factory outfit and that sort of thing. You're not cosplaying a World Cup downhill racer. Go and be you, but be the most you that you can be. Be honest and true to yourself. Don't don't play dress up. So that means setting up your bike how you want it, setting up your image how you want it. And you might think this is really hollow. The first thing he's talking about is image. Image is everything. People judge you first with their eyes. If you are in a sea of people dressed exactly the same, doing exactly the same thing, the only thing you've got going for you is your results. And I can see those on Roots and Rain. And even then, I might not even be that bothered. You know? So it's important to stand aside from the crowd. All of these other guys that are successful do it. It's a trait. Be a leader, not a follower. Now, I'm not saying, like, dudes ain't completely dumb or or wacky. I'm just saying that make sure that you are you and you're honest to the brand you. Protect your brand more than anything. Because sponsors will want to attach themselves to a brand. Kim Kardashian has sponsors in the millions, but she doesn't change who she is. She's a distilled version of her. So you need to be, be more Kardashian. I can't, I don't need to say that. You're, I'm just being honest, it's what works. Um, so for you, that that's probably one of the core things is actually making yourself into a brand. And that means consistency on everything. Um, open a YouTube page, Instagram, Tumblr, Facebook, Snapchat, and all be the same name and all be you. Come up with a, a weird name for yourself to differentiate. You know, like, you know, Ch- Chainsaw was a great nickname. Napalm is a great nickname. Even Petey is all right. Rat Boy, Loose Dog. Oh my God, look, they've all got a freaking nickname, haven't they? 
unless they're French, because they don't do fun, right? <laughs> but but do you see what I mean? Are you seeing a, a kind of pattern here? What's going on? On top of that, think differently about riding. We've seen a million whips now. We get it. We've seen a million scrubs now. We get it. We've seen Lewis doing jibs. We get it. Think outside the box. Give us new things. Create your own lines. Create your own style. Create something. If this is sounding like a lot of hard work already, you're not cut out for being sponsored. You will just get dropped or you won't get picked up at all. This will be what's required of you. Make sure that you're consistent on what you do across everything. That everything is consistent. That you repeatedly do things. Have an opinion. Talk to people. Interact with people online and in the real world. Meet space. Meet people in meet space. Be present. Go to events. Be there. Be seen. Don't be afraid to talk to people. Introduce yourself. I don't know how Ben Deakin got to where he is so quickly. I know that he's definitely charismatic. In fact, I might send him a message after this and say, I meant you, mentioned you like three or four times in a, in a vlog post. Let's talk about how you got to where you are. But you've got to see, like, Deakin, Deaconator, oi oi, what's not to like for a brand about a guy like that? He's fast, he's fun, he's witty, he appeals to people, you know, fundamentally a likeable, you look at his smile, he looks like he's done something wrong all of the time, like something naughty, you know, that's likeable, that's marketable, that's getting sponsored, when you're getting sponsored, you're nothing but a marketable asset, I'm really sorry to tell you, but that's it, you know, you need to be marketable, that means consistency and persistence as well, and you'll find that it's easier to be persistent and consistent with your personnel if you're true to who you are. Keeping up an act is really hard work. You don't need to be someone else. You don't need to pretend to be someone else. You don't need to start smoking weed and wearing tie-dye and listening to reggae to, to pretend to fit in with the 50 to 1 guys. You can go and do your own thing and be you. It's... I, I, I think it, it, it's fun. It's an experiment. Why don't one of you go out there and try and curate something and, and race to the top against someone else who's watching this? Choose someone else as your rival in the comments. Say, you, me and you, race you to, race you to first sponsored team rider and see if you can do it, you know? So let's say that we're six months down the line now. You've curated your image and style. You're a good rider. You're, in, you're introducing new tricks, new lines and new styles. You've won a couple of races. You're visible. You've had an interview with some blogs and some online magazines. You've talked to Shredder and Sender, you know. You've, um, you know, you've started to integrate. You've got a lot, lot more friends online that ride. You go different places to ride with them. That's, that's there. Right, cool. What's your next step? Now, you've not been approached by a brand yet to take you on cool now i've said don't go cold calling people but you're not really now because you've kind of introduced yourself to the scene so people might even start knowing who you are now's the time you can reach out and start talking to brands do you go back to the hey sexy lady want to go kiss no what you're going to do is you're going to get an email together with 30 or 40 seconds of edits a link to your Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Snapchat, the whole shebang. Then you're going to say, look, guys, looking to work with someone. I'm doing these races. I'm doing these events. Um, is there any chance you can hook us up with? Be clear of what you want. Say, can you get me a bike at wholesale price? Can you do that? You know, you ask for site delivery. What I'm... Um, <laughs> I'm forever destroying gloves, helmets, whatever. like ask, directly ask the people for something in return. For that. And it'll be like, I'll go out, I'll do this, this, we'll do this edit, you know, give them something, open a relationship. You might not hear back from that email. Phone up the company and say, hey man, I, I dropped you an email, wondering if you're interested in it. 
my name is XYZ, I'm gonna go and do these events. The guy might even sit on the, on the phone, go for the email. When I started sick with Tim, most of the time we were just trying to talk to people. And we, because we have, we have the same problem with manufacturing. The manufacturers are like, they want, they want to be making thousands of bikes for you. They don't want to be making 10. So when you ring up and you're like, hello, I'm starting a bike company and I want to be making bike with you and you make bike for me. And it, like, they're like, okay, pal, well, uh, yeah, I like, get back to you. Never do. Now, you know, now it's easy for us because we've got out there and, and stuff, but we had to take the step. You know, it was like contact Dirt Magazine and be like, hey, we're doing this. No response. Ring them up and go, hey, we're doing this. It'd be great if you guys could cover it. Would you like to come down on this day? We're going to show you this and this and this. It's like, cool, okay, we can do that. Like, you have to you have to be out there. You can't just scattergun Instagram messages. You've got to go and have a, an actual presence and talk to people. And you will find once you get... It's kind of like tugging at a thread. Once you pull it, it starts going on the groove on a record. It's going to be like that. Once you get going... The momentum builds and it becomes easier and easier. Once people know who you are, they're more likely to be able to talk to you. You know, there was loads of companies that we, you know, we tried to, we tried to talk to and interact with, and we couldn't. And and until we've even done the London bike show, they had no idea who we were. However, there's other companies that have taken a chance on us straight away. Um, DVO helped us out so much because we were just honest with them. We we're like, hello, we have no idea what we're doing. We don't know how this works. What do we do? And they're just like, heh. <laughs> Okay, man. Um, right. What do you want to know? Clear. Give them clear things. Okay. Cool. Right. Okay. We'll sort that out. And then and then they started helping us, and it was like, oh well, DVO are helping them, so other companies are kind of you know jumping on and stuff. Monster. We um, how did Monster come around the first time? Oh, with Monster, I literally said, oh hi, um, we're doing an event, um, and we're this bike company, and they don't do bike stuff very much. Um, but I was wondering if you can just uh, help us out with, like, um, like if we can get some case of drinks and some like ice and stuff like that, and you know, and, and help fill out our stall a little bit. And they were like, "Sure, okay, where is it?" And we're like, "Germany," <laughs> and they're like, "All right, we'll sort that out." And then when we're doing like the bigger shows, they're like, "Like you, you've got direct contact." It's like, "Hey man, can I do this?" Yeah, 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 cool, cool. What do you need? Oh, this, 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 and you get used to it, and it's easy. And that's what you got to do you got to start somewhere and at the moment you're probably nowhere so it's frustrating and every door is closed to you but what I'm saying is if you're really setting out to do it and also this is probably the best bit of advice I can give you if you're just out looking for a free bike and you're not going to work for it down the line this is going to be really frustrating really fast and it's not going to be fun at all teams are really really financially managed and they're really strapped for cash. So if you don't bring anything to the table, you're not going to have a good time. Like, really. And you'll miss so many great opportunities for things that you could be doing. And so many exciting things. There are friends of mine now that are travelling the world riding. They're being paid to ride. And if you want to do that, it's there for you. But you are going to have to work for it as much as you would any other job. But it's worth it. You'll make less money, but you won't be spending money on bike stuff. So it's worth it. Me and Tim are probably poorer than we've ever been in the last five years. But we get to play a bike stuff. and get a box through the post. It's a pair of custom bars that were made for me. It's like, oh, God, it's beautiful, you know. Um, message from Jeff at DVO last night. It's like, ah, oh, we've just made this new shark and we made a couple of them. We'll just send it over, see what you think. And it's like, wow, that's what I want to be doing. So how did everyone in our team get a job? What was their, their click into it? Josh, when we took our prototype to ball track riding, Josh was like, <laughs> cool, what's that? And we're like, oh, it's sick. He's like, I've heard about this. Yeah, yeah. Can I have a go? And it's like, yep. He took our prototype off. He's like, guys, can I do that six pack of doubles? And we were like, hell yeah. And he did it. He's like, come back. He's like, I can do it so much better than that. And then he wouldn't give our bike back for like an hour. And then he was just like sending it. And me and Tim were tired. So we took a little break. And, <laughs> and he was so enthusiastic. And he was showing it to his mates. He's like, look at this. And do you see this and this and this and this? And we were like, this guy's great. Like we had, didn't even think about having a team at that point. You know, no no thought about it at all and then um but when we thought of our first team rider 
straight on to Josh. Um, Alex is the only person that's ever, ever contacted us and asked for something. But he was like, hello, my name's Alex. I'm racing in the Enduro World Series. I've broken my bike. Would you be interested in lending me your prototype hardtail for two rounds of the Enduro World Series? And um, then I'll give it back to you and let you know how I got on with it. And we were like, yeah. <laughs> and then when he came back, we asked him if he wanted to join the team full time. So, yeah, not really, not really a big decision, that one. Um, Tess, we, um, Tess bought quite a few of our stuff, so we knew, knew her. Um, she's fun, she's outgoing, she rides, she's like, um, re like, when I say she rides, I mean, like, she's never off her bike every single day. It's like, I'm at the pump track, I'm at the BMX track, I'm at the skate park, I'm riding downhill, I'm riding enduro, we rode to the top of this mountain, we're racing this, I'm doing hard rock, I'm doing hard boards, and you're like, she never stops riding, and she's constantly just on it on it on it and and i you know we had like a good working relationship with her in that we were just like chatting and stuff like that and then i saw a, a ard moors or ard rock like max's tires video and she was on it and she interviewed so well we just rang her straight up and just offered her um a job even though we couldn't really afford another rider um she was worth it isa we saw racing at the forest of dean um and she uh she was just loud and fun and sketchy and fast and sendy and outgoing. We're like, yeah, got to work for her. She hasn't got time at the moment because she's like studying at college. But we're like, let's line this up. And in the future, when you want to go and ride, we'll, we'll ride. So we gave her like a future sort of job. And now we help her with her, um, like she's studying like design of products and stuff. So we give her all of our design info and, and that on our pedals and bars or anything we're making. She gets to look for all that because that's what she wants to do when she's, you know, like in business. I think she wants to be a bike product designer. So we're helping her do that. Ethan was a test rider on our first ever Dirt Magazine test. He was the test rider there. He was so full of stoke, so sandy, found so many lines, really, really super, super, super enthusiastic and we just loved him, just loved everything about him. We, we made a position for him of like a um, lifestyle ambassador because he just embodies everything we want to be in the industry, everything. And that, that's why we gave him that job. Steve Gill was me and Tim's hero. So when we found out that he was looking for a new ride, we just approached him and we thought he'd say no, but he said yes. And the product feedback from someone who's been riding so long, can ride so many things and it's just so steezy and fun. He just, he lives the brand. In fact, a, a bike, another bike company um, run me up yesterday and said, when I heard that Gil was riding for sick, he was like, I just can't think of a better combination. No, that mean either. So that's that's why everyone is doing what they're doing. So what do you do? You go away, you plan, start getting your head together, form your brand, the brand you. People will interact with you. Oh, rain's coming down, nice. Um, and 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 start your way to success. Because if you believe in yourself, like you can actually do it. When we sat down and said we wanted to start a bike company, people laughed. People are still laughing. But the joke gets less funny, believe me. <laughs> so if you really want to do it, you can. You don't need to be rich. You don't need to be influential. You don't need to have friends in high places. You can make those friends. And believe me, it's going to be worth it. Please don't ask me for a sponsorship, though. I'm serious. I'm tired. <laughs> also, last warning. Seriously, before I go, if you just ask for a sponsorship and someone are, and someone says yes without seeing anything of you, it's going to be a scam. There are a lot of unscrupulous, nasty, horrible people out there. Don't fall for their crap. Don't enable them to do it. I hope that's been insightful. Any more questions, let me know in the comments. I might do a follow-up on this, or I might never do a vlog again because it was so nerve-wracking. Great to meet you guys. Have a good one. Might see you on the trails this summer.